Hello friends, welcome to Dungeons & Dragonfly, where I adapt various characters for use in D&D. I'm Dragonfly9078, and today we'll be building the Charmander Evolutionary line, starting with Charmander and ending with Charizard. You probably don't need any background for Charmander, Charmeleon, and Charizard. They're arguably the most iconic starter Pokémon in the entire franchise. They had a huge role in the anime, from Charmander being abandoned in the rain, to Charizard casually flamethrowering Ash in the face, and they were even prominently featured a full seven generations after their introduction as the signature Pokémon of the champion Leon in Pokémon Sword and Shield. If you've been even tangentially involved with Pokémon at all, you know who they are. So what do we want from this build? Well, since we're building the whole evolutionary line, we'll need to evolve over the course of the build, showing off all the forms we can take. That means Charmander, Charmeleon, Charizard, Mega Charizard X, Mega Charizard Y, and even Gigantamax Charizard. Next, as Fire-type Pokémon, we'll need to bring the heat, with plenty of Fire-type moves, though we'll also want to pick up some other moves for type coverage. And finally, Charizard and Charmeleon in particular are known to seek out tough opponents to test themselves, so we'll need some physical training to match up. Looking over at ability scores, we'll be using the standard point array. If you want to roll for stats, that's fine, just make sure your strength and charisma are high enough to multiclass. Unlike most builds we've done, we actually have a concrete definition of what our base stats should look like, so I'll be trying to keep to that as much as I can. I'm using Charizard's base stats here, since, you know, we'll be ending up as Charizard in the end. Starting off with a 13 in strength, Charizard has an okay attack stat, but it's lower than its speed, so we'll make Dexterity 14. Charizard's HP and Defense are its lowest stats, so Constitution is only going to be 12. And since Pokémon are effectively animals who need to be directed by trainers, we'll make our Intelligence 8 and our Wisdom 10. And we'll finish up with a 15 in Charisma for Charizard's high special attack, and for being a fan favorite that keeps coming back over and over. Despite having dragonish traits like breathing fire and flying and, you know, being a literal dragon, Charizard is not a dragon-type Pokémon. That said, the best way to represent one is as a chromatic dragonborn. We'll take the modest nature for plus two to special attack and plus one to dexterity, and we'll pick red for our chromatic ancestry. We get resistance to the energy type associated with the color of dragon we're descended from. Red dragons breathe fire, Charizard is a fire type, and hey, fire is not very effective against fire types. Furthermore, starting at third level, we can get immunity to the chosen energy type for 10 minutes as an action once per day. We also get a breath weapon, a number of times per day equal to our proficiency bonus, when we take the attack action, we can exhale a line of fire that's 30 feet long and 5 feet wide in place of one of our attacks, forcing creatures in the area to make a dexterity save. The save DC is equal to 8 plus our constitution modifier plus our proficiency bonus, and if they fail, they take 2d8 fire damage, half that on a success. The damage increases as we level up, going up to 3d8 at level 5, 4d8 at level 11, and capping off at 5d8 at level 17. Make your own custom background, call it the Pokemon background, to get the skills we need to survive in the wild, namely perception and survival. Pokemon get stronger with their trainers, of course, but they also have their food and shelter needs met, at least usually, so they need to learn to survive on their own in the wild before they get caught. Pokemon moves are innate to their species, so we'll be starting off as both a Charmander and as a Sorcerer. We get two skills from the Sorcerer list. Intimidation is good for a young not-dragon, who will eventually be scary and Insight is both good and more in flavor for a wild animal than the other options. Wild animals tend not to have much use for arcana or religion, and Persuasion and Deception don't really seem like Charmander's style. We're eventually going to need to get big, so we'll go with the Giant Soul, which eases the pain of Sorcerer Hit Dice a bit, with Jotun Resilience, giving us an extra 1 HP per Sorcerer level. We also pick a Mark of the Ordning, which gives us two spells now and one spell later. We'll go with Fire, of course, to get Fire Bolt, a single-target Ember attack that deals up to 4d10 fire damage on a hit, and Burning Hands, a 15-foot cone Flame Burst that deals 3d6 fire damage to any creatures in the area who fail a dexterity save, half on a success. We'll grab Dancing Lights and Light to help ourselves and our team see in the dark, though funny enough, none of the Charmander line can learn Flash. I actually looked, and there's actually only six Fire-type Pokémon who can learn Flash. Entei? Poe, Victini, and the Litwick Evolution line, which just seems kind of weird to me. Anyway, uh, Create Bonfire makes a 5-foot cube of flame on the ground for up to a minute, 
dealing up to 4d8 fire damage to any creature in the space who fails a dex save, no damage on a success. And since every Pokemon that can use TMs can use the TM for Toxic for some reason, we'll pick up Poison Spray to deal up to 4d12 poison damage to a creature who fails a constitution save. Our last spell for this level is a Charmander classic, Smoke Screen, which blows a 20-foot radius sphere of smoke that obscures the area and reduces accuracy. Second level sorcerers get a Font of Magic, a pool of sorcery points that we can convert into spell slots and vice versa. We can also use them to fuel our metamagic to enhance our spells. Pokemon usually don't need to speak to use their moves, and actually usually can't speak at all, so we'll pick up Subtle Spell. An Empowered Spell will up the damage of our spells by letting us reroll a number of a spell's damage dice up to our Charisma modifier. For spells at this level, we get Flaming Sphere from our Mark of the Ordning, creating a 5 foot diameter fireball that we can move 30 feet with our bonus action. The ball lasts for up to a minute and forces any creature it runs into or that ends its turn within 5 feet of the ball to make a dex save or take 2d6 fire damage. We'll also get a setup move, work up, swords dance, dragon dance, whichever you prefer, we're representing it with enhance ability, which gives us advantage on checks using the ability of our choice. If we pick strength, our carrying capacity doubles, if we pick dexterity, we can fall 20 feet without taking damage, and if we pick constitution, we get 2d6 temporary HP. Fourth level Charmanders get Dragonhide, rounding off our strength to 14 and giving us permanent mage armor, making our AC 13 plus our dexterity while we aren't wearing armor. Some Pokemon wear armor. Charmander is not one of them, so this is good for us. We also learn Scratch, as our claws become retractable melee weapons that deal 1d4 plus our strength slashing damage on a hit. And we'll get some type coverage with Thunder Punch, which deals up to 4d8 lightning damage, to a creature we hit with a melee spell attack, as well as preventing them from taking reactions for a turn. We have advantage on the attack if the target is wearing metal armor, but we already have type advantage against steel types with our fire moves, so this is really good if we specifically need to take down an Empoleon. For our next TM, Rock Tomb traps a creature who fails a strength save in a prison of stone and dirt, dealing 2d6 damage to them and restraining them for up to a minute. We can pile on more rocks on following turns, dealing an additional 2d6 if they fail another strength save, half as much on a success, and they can use their action to make a strength check to try to break out on their turn. Sixth level giant sorcerers get Soul of Lost Astoria, giving us a little bit of a stab bonus by adding our constitution modifier to the damage of our Mark of the Ordning spells. At seventh level, Charmander learns Flame Charge, increasing our speed by 20 feet for up to a minute and letting us move without provoking opportunity attacks. Also, when we pass within 5 feet of a creature or object, they take 1d6 fire damage from the flames around us. First level Charmeleons learn Rage, giving us resistance to bludgeoning, piercing, and slashing damage, advantage on strength checks and saves, and two additional damage to our strength-based melee weapons, like our claws. We also get unarmored defense, but our dragon hide is better, so just use that instead. Charmeleon is more aggressive than Charmander, so we get Reckless Attack, letting us get advantage on our strength-based melee attacks, but giving other creatures advantage on attacks against us. But Charmeleon is also more experienced in battle than Charmander, letting us develop a danger sense that gives us advantage on dexterity saves against effects we can see, like spells and traps. Now that we're training seriously to fight strong opponents, we'll use Primal Knowledge to gain proficiency in athletics, and with the Path of the Beast, we'll learn more versatile physical attacks that we can use while we rage. Bite deals 1d8 piercing damage on a hit and heals us a number of HP equal to our proficiency bonus if we're below half health and Slash deals 1d6 slashing damage on a hit, and if we're using the attack action on our turn, we can make an extra slash attack with the same action. Next, we'll pick up Resilient to round off our dexterity and to get proficiency with dex saves, as well as Fast Movement, which increases our speed by 10 feet, and Extra Attack to make a second attack with the attack action. So we can replace one attack with the use of our breath weapon and still make two slash attacks. As we get ready to evolve, we get Bestial Soul, upgrading our Bite and Slash to Fire Fang and Dragon Claw by letting them count as magical for overcoming resistances. Whenever we finish a rest, we can also enhance our movement by picking a Swim Speed, a Climb Speed, or better Jumping. If we get a Swim Speed, we can also breathe underwater. If we get a Climbing Speed, we can climb on walls and ceilings without an ability check. 
And if we pick jumping, we can increase our jump distance by a number of feet equal to the result of an athletics check once every turn. First order of business now that we've evolved is getting a pair of wings. Dragon Wings is a Dragonborn exclusive feat that gives us a 20 foot flying speed. That's increased by our fast movement, making it a 30 foot flying speed in total. We'll also learn Flamethrower, which actually works exactly the same as our breath weapon, dealing 3d8 fire damage to every creature in a 30 foot line who fails a dexterity save, half that on a success. To deal with electric types, now that we're a flying type, we'll pick up Bulldoze, the ground erupts in a 20-foot cube centered on a point we choose, dealing 3d12 damage to every creature in the area who fails a dex save, half on a success. Their speed is also lowered as the entire area becomes difficult terrain. Now if you played during the first generation of Pokemon, then you know just how busted Fire Spin was. It's since been fixed, of course, but it still creates a 20-foot diameter ring of fire that deals 5d8 damage to every creature in the area who fails a dex save, half on a success. We can then point the fire inward, dealing the same damage to any creature that ends its turn in the ring, or passes through the wall. Tenth level sorcerers get another meta magic. Careful spell lets us pick a number of creatures up to our charisma modifier to automatically succeed on the saving throw of our spells. How do you think Ash survived so many flamethrowers to the face? Charizard had careful spell. That's the only possible explanation. We also get another cantrip. Shadow Claw is a spell attack that deals up to 4d8 necrotic damage to a creature that it hits, and also prevents them from regaining HP for a turn. As a ghost-type move, it's especially good against other undead that it hits, giving them disadvantage on attacks against us until our next turn. Inferno is a powerful fire-type move that deals 8d6 damage to a target that fails a dexterity save, half on a success. If they fail the save, they're also burned for up to a minute. At the end of each of their turns, they repeat the save, taking 4d6 fire damage on a fail, and ending the effect on a success. For more coverage against water types, and especially against rock types since we're now quad weak to rock, we'll pick up the combination of Sunny Day and Solar Beam at level 11. For up to a minute, we give off daylight in a 60 foot radius, and we can use our action to fire a 60 foot long beam of sunlight, dealing 6d8 radiant damage to any creature in the area who fails a constitution save, as well as blinding them. They aren't blinded and take half as much damage on a success. With our last ability score improvement, we'll pick up Roar, rounding off our charisma to 18. We can replace one use of our breath weapon with a roar that forces a wisdom save on every creature of our choice within 30 feet. If they fail, they're frightened of us for a minute, though they can repeat the save if they take any damage. We'll also learn to Mega Evolve into Mega Charizard X with Tasha's Otherworldly Guise. Our flying speed bumps up to 50 with our fast movement. We get plus two AC, immunity to either fire and poison damage and the poison condition, or radiant and necrotic damage and the charmed condition. Thanks to our new Tough Claws ability, our physical attacks are enhanced as well, as we can use our Charisma for their attack and damage rolls instead of our Strength, and they all count as magical for overcoming resistances. For Mega Charizard Y, we'll go with Draconic Transformation. And no, it, it doesn't bother me that I'm using the spell called Draconic Transformation for the Mega Evolution that isn't Dragon-type. It's fine, it's fine, it doesn't bother me, it doesn't bother me, it bothers me, it bothers me a lot! Anyway, we get 30 feet of blind sight and can see invisible creatures in the area. Our flying speed goes up to 50 thanks to our fast movement, and since we're more of a special attacker than Mega Charizard X, we can use Dragon Pulse with our bonus action each turn to deal 3d8 force damage to every creature in a 30 foot cone who fails a dexterity save, half as much on a success. Fire Blast is our highest level fire type move, creating a huge storm of fire made up of 10 10 foot cubes that we can arrange however we wish as long as they're touching, even in the shape of, say, the kanji for great or big. Just a suggestion. Creatures in the area take 7d10 fire damage if they fail a dexterity save, half that on a success. Our capstone is the 14th level of Giant Soul Sorcerer. Rage of Fallen Astoria lets us Gigantamax once per rest when we cast a sorcerer's spell. For one minute, we grow one size category. Usually it'll be medium to large. Our current and maximum HP both increase by one for each sorcerer level we have. Our reach and walking speed both increase by five feet. We get advantage on strength checks and saves, and our melee weapons get a bonus to their damage equal to our constitution modifier. 
Now we can technically use any of our sorcerer spells to trigger our Gigantamax, including the ones we use for Mega Evolution. But my choice for a dedicated Gigantamax spell is Investiture of Flame. We become covered in fire, giving us immunity to fire damage and resistance to cold damage. Also, any creature that moves up to us or ends its turn within 5 feet of us takes 1d10 fire damage from the intense heat. And we can use our action to exhale a 15 foot line of fire that deals 4d8 fire damage to any creature in the area who fails a dexterity save. Half on a success. Now that the build is complete, the question becomes, how good is it? Well, we have so much fire. We have 10 fire spells and 6 uses of our breath weapon per day. We will literally never run out of fire, and fire spells tend to do a lot of damage. We can also fly, so we can just fly by, stay out of range, rain fire out of the sky, and just generally be a goddamn dragon. If we actually feel like supporting our team and not just burning everything to the ground, we're also decent at battlefield control, with ways to slow down, blind, frighten, and just generally herd our enemies into flamethrower range. On the other hand, we're pretty heavily specialized in one of the most commonly resisted damage types and one of the most common saving throws. We do have a few non-fire spells, but the vast majority of our damage is either fire, or forces of dexterity save, or both. We also run into the eternal problem of spellcasting barbarians, that rage prevents us from casting and concentrating on spells, so several of our class abilities just don't function with each other at all. And finally, Gigantamax is really holding this build back. Giant Soul is one of the best ways I've found to build a character who grows in size like that, and I'd certainly use it for, say, Aaron Jaeger from Attack on Titan, but if I didn't have to worry about Gigantamaxing here, I probably would have taken the Draconic Bloodline Sorcerer, which would mean I wouldn't need a couple of the feats I took, freeing those ability score improvements up for other feats or just making our ability scores better. Charizard keeps coming back for a reason. It's strong, it's nostalgic, and it's just plain cool. But in Dungeons and Dragons, it kind of falls behind the actual dragons. Fly around and breathe all the fire you want, but don't be surprised if some monk just evasions through your flames and punches you in the face. Charizard, the flame Pokemon. Charizard's powerful flame can melt absolutely anything. I hope you enjoyed the build. If you have any feedback or suggestions for characters you'd like to see me build, please leave them in the comments below. Thank you for watching, friends. I will see y'all later.